the second approach that we're going to follow approach number two is to keep track of the counts of pairs in main memory by using a hash map or hash table so if the pair of items i comma j appears more than or equal to um, say just once so as long as the pair of items i comma j appears somewhere in the file it's going to have a non zero count and in this hash map we are just going to keep track of pairs of items that have a non zero count we're not going to keep track of pairs of items that have a count of zero so as soon as we discover a new pair of items whose which we had not seen before during our second pass we'll create an entry for it in the hash map and set its count to 1 then the next time we see that same pair of items again we will just add 1 to the count so we look up the hash map we will find that this pair of items already has a count in the hash map and we'll just add 1 to the count so if the count of the pair i comma j is c we are going to store the value c in the hash map where the key is an ordered pair i comma j so if the item ids and the counts are represented as integers which and each integer takes up four bytes then to maintain a single count value for a single pair of items i comma j we will need 12 bytes why because we need to maintain the key in the hash map as well as the value what's the key the key is this ordered pair i comma j and the value is the count of the pair of items i comma j so we need three integers uh, in the hash map to store the count for this single pair of items that means we need about 12 bytes for each pair of items now this is significantly more than 4 bytes which is what we needed in the earlier approach the triangular matrix approach in the triangular matrix approach we were keeping track of counts for every possible pair of items even those pairs which never perhaps occur in the uh, transaction file so the number of such pairs was capital N choose 2 in this case in, in the case of the hash map based solution we require 12 bytes for storing the count for each pair Whereas here we just needed four bytes because given a pair of items i comma j, we would immediately know what the index in this unidimensional array is where the count for this pair is stored, and this index is going to be unique for this pair. If you have, if you take a different pair, say m comma uh, p, for a different pair, for a pair that is different from i comma j the index is also going to be different and that's something you can see when you exactly derive the formula for the index in the unidimensional array so we just need to store the actual count for the pair i comma j we don't have to keep track of the fact that i comma j has some information uh, has some count information for it stored in this array because every pair has some count information for it in this array in, in contrast to the hash map based solution where you didn't have information stored for every pair you just had information stored for those pairs which have a non-zero count but the amount of space you need for those 
uh, pairs is three times as much as you needed in the other solution. So what happens if most pairs occur even if infrequently? Well then the number of keys in your hash map will be not very different from capital N choose 2 because most pairs are occurring uh, even if infrequently. Most pairs do have a non-zero count. In that case you're better off using the triangular matrix approach because that one that approach requires four bytes for each pair whereas this approach requires 12 bytes for each pair. So if the expected number of pairs that are going to occur is say less than one-third of the total number of possible pairs then a hash map based solution may make more sense because even if you're using three times as much information uh, three times as much space for each pair because the total number of pairs is, is, is much less or at least less than n, n choose 2 which is the total number of pairs you have allocating three times as much space will still end up saving some space compared to the triangular matrix solution. So this hash map based solution is going to be more efficient in terms of space provided that the number of pairs that have a non-zero count is less than one-third of the total number of pairs. If it's more than one-third of the total number of pairs then you may be better off just using the triangular matrix solution. And that is what is represented here in the previous slide that we saw. Approach number two, which is the hash map based solution, is going to use 12 p bytes approximately, where p is the total number of pairs that have a non zero count. For each pair, we are using 12 bytes. So, this approach is going to beat the triangular matrix only if less than one-third of all possible pairs actually occur. So if the number of pairs, so if P is less than one-third of N choose 2, then 12P is going to be less than four times. So 12P will just be less than 12 times one-third of n choose 2. So this becomes 4. So 12p is less than 4 times n choose 2. So let me write that down again. 4 times n choose 2 which is 4 times n n minus 1 by 2 which is twice n of n minus 1. So 12p is going to be less than 2n times n minus 1. This is the amount of space required by the hash map based solution. And how much space in terms of bytes does the triangular matrix solution require? Where you have n choose two pairs that you are keeping track of and for each pair you are just using four bytes because you just need to keep track of the count for each pair. So this would also be n n minus one by two multiplied by four which is two n times n minus one. So this is the amount of space required by the triangular matrix solution. So if the amount of space required by the hash map based solution is less than one third of the total number of possible pairs that occur, then the amount of space that's going to be required by the hash map based solution is can also be said to be less than the amount of space required by the triangular matrix based solution. And so it makes more sense, therefore, to use the hash map based solution in this circumstance and to use the triangular matrix based solution in the other circumstance. So here is a diagrammatic representation of this same comparison. In the triangular matrix based solution, you have a count information for every pair of items. So every cell of this triangle is filled and each cell is taking up four bytes of information. So each cell corresponds to the count for one particular pair of items. And four bytes are used per pair so the total number of uh, 
total amount of space would be n choose 2 which is the total number of cells in the triangular matrix multiplied by 4. Whereas in the hash map based solution you're not storing the count information for every cell you're only storing the count information for those pairs of items that actually occur together in some basket in the original file. So if the number of such pairs which actually occur are very small then even by using 12 bytes per occurring pair you may end up saving uh, 12 times the total number of non-zero ent uh, entries that are shown here which is basically the total number of uh, keys in the hash table 12 times the total number of these pairs is going to be less than 4 times NC2. That's when it makes sense to use a hash table based solution. Whereas if the total number of pairs that have a non-zero count are huge, let's say this the total number of these gray circles had been huge so that they covered up most of the triangle, then because each circle is requiring 12 bytes of space, we may have been better off by allocating all of these cells in the triangle but using only 4 bytes per pair as opposed to allocating uh, not all of them but ending up spending 12 bytes per pair. So with this let's move on to the actual algorithm for discovering frequent item sets.